Mary PM Boop Tube. I am back with uh, one of my newer videos uh, series, um, my comics uh, series. So um, when I went to uh, my local comic shop that I like to visit, uh, there wasn't a lot of new uh, issues in my subscription bag, so I, I chose to take a few of my new ones and then also mine the uh, the back issues to try and fill out some of my old uh, older series that I'm trying to complete and stuff like that so it's it's a little combination of everything so the first one up is um, issue 15 of Transformers a bold new era which is a, a current series that's underway right now this one's kind of a slow uh, slow moving issue that's more of a you know a little story development it's uh, a lot of it is Megatron ruminating on his uh, how his life went on on Cybertron before he decided to get involved with the Ascenticons and and rebel from the whole caste system or whatever they whatever it is and uh and he goes and confronts Shockwave and lays the smack down on him and uh lays some ground rules uh with his subordinates and and uh and how things are going to go from now on and then on the Autobot side of things uh Sentinel Prime has uh laid down some some uh, instructions on trying to bring some of these Ascenticons to justice, uh, Six Shot and some other guys, and uh, bringing Soundwave into custody and questioning him and uh, taking some drastic measures uh, into their own hands to try and stop this threat that's going on with the Ascenticons. So, like I said, slow moving, but a bit of a story development thing, but uh, that's what uh, they need every so often to move things along, right? So, next up, a newer G.I. Joe series called Wanted. Issue number three. In this one, we see a small team of Joes undercover in a, in a small Missouri town. I forget the name of it, but uh, Roadblock, um, Frontier, Lightfoot, Tiger, and somebody else. They're, uh, they're undercover in this small Missouri town to uh, take out a convoy of Cobra vehicles that are bringing supplies uh, somewhere. Um, I don't remember, to Chicago maybe or something. I don't, I don't remember. Um, but they have to plant some explosives at a bridge and, and send the convoy plunging into a river and stop Cobra from from uh, getting these supplies to 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 its destination. And there's a bit of strife within the Joe unit, especially with Roadblock, as uh, it's it's living supplies, food, and that sort of thing for for the the citizens that are now under Cobra rule. So at the same time, they're kind of they're having a bit of t a hard time struggling with well we're taking these supplies away from normal everyday people um even though they're aligned with cobra and and have fallen into this new regime and roblox well the usa surrendered so cobra is the ruling power so we're just taking food away from normal people right so it's kind of this this uh struggle within the joe unit uh, about this job um and that's how that one went i also got issue four of the same gi joe wanted series and in this one, it's it's all focused on Major Blood and how he became aligned with Cobra, how he feels about Cobra Commander and his leadership, how he feels about Destro and Mars Industries and their, their weapon running. And uh, when he discovers that Cobra and Mars are linked up in the end, he has some bad feelings about that. And it kind of ends on a cliffhanger about he's going to do something about it so but we don't know what yet because the issue ends before we find out so that one's kind of uh again these ones have all been kind of slower moving ones um with, with a little bit more story development than than the action side of things so so that was it for the newer ones that i got the next it's a it's a five issues in a row from uh a older series called the tales of gi joe so when i was a kid i collected the gi joe a real american hero was kind of the the main uh series of gi joe comics that went on for a long long time they had a uh, close to 200 issues i guess i would think but then there were all these offshoots there was gi joe special missions which wasn't very long only 16 or 20 or maybe 30 issues it was pretty short there was G.I. Joe European missions. There was all sorts of these little offshoots that, that um, branched off from this main uh, 
series and Tales of G.I. Joe is another one of these which I just recently discovered in the last few years. I didn't know about this one when I was younger so I've started to kind of fill it out as well. So it starts at issue number two where a small team of Joes which includes I believe Stalker, Snake Eyes, Breaker and Scarlet they go to the Arctic to check in on a, um, a G.I. Joe uh, outpost that's up there that's been ravaged by somebody and uh, there's also a Russian post in the same area so they go and investigate that and they try and piece together what's going on only to find uh, to run into um, an adversary they weren't really counting on and uh, they have to kind of navigate these harsh conditions and this uh, the cleverness of this kind of native of the area who uh, kind of gets the better of them a couple times before they try and take it to them um, and, and get out of this situation so it was a really neat uh, issue I really like the story in that one next up and this was another really good one I really like this series uh, right after it was uh, Tales of G.I. Joe number three so in this one Cobra's big idea is to stage uh, a battle with G.I. Joe where they sick this big robot on G.I. Joe and uh, the Joes take it out and uh, and then they take it back to the pit for study. Um, little do they know is that the robot is rigged to activate after a certain amount of time and reassemble itself and the point of that is to uh, fight its way out of the pit, get to the surface, and then activate a homing beacon so that Cobra can finally uh, discern the location of G.I. Joe's secret base, which is shielded from, from all sorts of stuff. So they need this robot to get to the surface and, and activate this beacon to do so. So at the same time, this robot finally uh, awakens from its slumber and starts causing havoc. Uh, Hawk and Scarlet are, are up on the first floor of the pit hosting a, a chaplain's luncheon or something like that so the people having lunch start hearing all these weird sounds coming from the grates on the floor and they're like what is going on here because they don't know the pit is down there so they just think uh, the, the the first floor is on solid ground so um hawk and scarlet are kind of sweating it out not knowing what's going on down there as uh, the rest of the joes battle this robot so very cool issue as well next up tales of gi joe number four and in this one uh, a rogue paramilitary crazy group led by Commander Wingfield is preparing uh, for doomsday somewhere in Montana and uh, this Wingfield is taking in innocent people and turning them into monsters and having them follow his uh, psychopathic ways and so going undercover as as two new recruits are hawk and grunt and uh on the outside scouting uh the outside of the facility is snake eyes of course because he's a crazy styled ninja and so the two uh, go in and, and try and figure things out find out you know is cobra backing this guy what kind of weaponry do they have are they really a threat that sort of thing so trying to bring him down from the inside and uh in the end they find out exactly what's going on and uh they have to disarm a nuke and uh, uh, take down, you know, this Wingfield and uh, some of his crazy forces. So that was uh, another good issue. Not as good as the first two. I really liked those first two, but that was also a good one. This one I really liked as well. It was short and sweet and action-packed. Tales of G.I. Joe number five. Yes, I found a lot of them in a row, which I always like to get a run. <clears throat> um, so in this one, there's a... Uh, a military parade that's scheduled and the Joes have a new uh, tank called the Mobat and it's got all this crazy tech built into it but on the outside it just looks like uh, another tank so the Joes are gonna run it through the parade in front of the military brass and then afterwards spring it on them that you guys didn't even notice this high-tech tank was was in your midst because they're nervous about it falling into Cobra hands and stuff um, little do the Joes know is that Cobra catches wind of this that the Mobat is going to be in the parade so they they plan a, a scheme to capture it and take it for their own and uh, so basically it's a it's a fight through yeah I, th I think it's New York right 
yeah, it's in New York, and the and the fight goes to Central Park, and that's where it kind of ends. So, uh, a very cool issue as well. And finally, the last one, Tales of GI Joe number six, and in this one, a experimental Russian spy craft crash lands in the mountains of Afghanistan. And so the Joes, the, the uh, a group of Afghani rebels has possession of the plane and its pilot, and they agree to sell uh, the, the tech to the Joes as long as they can come get it before either Cobra or the Russians uh, try and claim it for their own. So it's uh, kind of a race to Af the Afghani mountains and to the, the ship and to cart it away before uh, the Cobra and the Russians October Guard, who are their version of G.I. Joe, um, get to it themselves. So um, also a good issue. Not as good as the first two and that last one in Central Park, but uh, all very good stories. I really like my jam as a kid was was the, the G.I. Joe and Transformers Marvel comics. Like those were easily my two favorite comic series. Um, with G.I. Joe probably having a slight edge over Transformers, I just really liked um, the lighthearted but also serious kind of adventures they had, the depth of all the different characters they had, and uh, the pace of the comics were really good. And uh, the main series was kind of more quick and action-packed, whereas like something like the Special Mission series was a little more uh, story-driven and a little slower, and also a little bit more serious sort of thing. So, but uh, w when I can find old GI Joe comics back from the Marvel days, uh, especially that many in a row like that, I always consider it a good trip to the comic book store. So. Um, I didn't have as much stuff in my subscription bag this month, like I said, because uh, I, I think they may have screwed up some of the the the, the series that I wanted, um, maybe taken away my real American hero in place of the wanted and stuff like that. And I didn't have any Ninja Turtles in there this month. So when I go back in February, I'm going to see which ones are in my bag and make sure that they do have all of those other series still on my list as the ones I want to get every month. So um, I hope that next month it's going to be a lot more newer ones than this month. And uh, depending on how I spend my budget for my month, um, there may be even a couple of older ones if uh, if I'm able to dip into that as well. So, But we'll see. You never know what a trip to the comic book store is going to bring. That's half the fun. You never know what you're going to come back with. So um, until... Uh, uh, February for comics at least, I bid you adieu.